Ordering on AliExpress, Part 3. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Part 3 of this small little mini-series, Ordering from AliExpress. This is the third and final installment. And, uh... It's been roughly a week now since I've had the, uh... The fakey. <laughs> the fakey. And dare I say EVH, because it's, it's not an EVH product. As, as everybody knows, it's not. And, uh... And uh, we're going to get into some comments uh, tonight. And uh, I'm going to tell you, I've been in here all night long. It is it is presently uh, 4 a.m. So technically, it's uh, early Saturday morning. I've been working on stuff uh, uh, since uh, yesterday evening and uh, Friday evening. And oh my gosh, man, I'm beat. But I want to get this finished. You know, I'm, I'm that close to the finish line, man. I want to get it done, and uh, I want to let people know how things are going uh, with the guitar. I'm gonna get this right one day <laughs> with this with this mirror image. It's just so crazy. But I've had some great comments, man. I've had uh, some really positive uh, feedback for the most part. There's, you know, you've always got that handful of, of negative feedback, which is fine. You know, I, uh, you know, I get it, man. Um, but uh, so we're going to go over some comments uh, from parts uh, one and two, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about the guitar and also this guitar as well. All right, people were uh, asking if we were going to have a follow up, you know, because in the in part two, I really, I really just kind of uh, explained the upgrades that I purchased uh, to put on the guitar. I really didn't show any close ups of the guitar or any of anything and i and i was kind of wondering later i was like man i really didn't all you can see is this right here and that's really doesn't do it justice but that's okay i already knew i was going to do a part three i already knew that with that being said let me grab the guitar and show you a couple of close-ups really quick and you can kind of see what's going on here we go right here all right this is the beautiful fakie from aliexpress all right now, there's a couple of things that I haven't uh, done that I was planning on doing. I'm going to replace that pickup with the uh, red pickup that's in the, you know, the uh, official Frankie. <laughs> uh, I was hoping it would come in the mail, so it should come this afternoon. But I've been so busy, uh, still working on this guitar and uh, everything else, and I said I'll do it later. Uh, installing the pickup that is and i ordered an, another neck plate uh for the back and it's going to say uh you remember the shirt eddie had and it said no bozos with the circle with the red line through it and bozo the clown is it's a neck plate that's got that on it uh but yeah so you got your goto trim on there all right uh i only have two springs in the back that's all i need um what I do like about this is this with the what the Golo Godo, <laughs> you have the brass block. All right, it's nice. Like I said in the last video, I didn't change out any electronics. Uh, I didn't need to. I didn't need to. Uh, Mighty Might Neck. All right, uh, it's the uh, R3 locking nut from Sweetwater with the uh, gold color titanium locking screws. Uh, and I have locking tuners. Some people are like, why you put locking tuners if you have a locking nut? I just That's just what I like. I mean, just that extra little bit of stability. You know, this guitar, for what I've done to it, the money and um, performance of the guitar is it's pretty good, man. I mean, really, it's... it's Now, is it... I mean, is it like a, an official EVH product? Well, no. You know, it's, it's got some flaws in it. Uh, the action is just a tad high from from what I really like, um, prefer rather. 
uh, but it's not too high where you know you can't you can't maneuver or anything. <laughs> where the locking nut goes right here, I think I think it could have been sanded down a little bit more from Mighty Might. Uh, so the the locking nut sticks up a little taller than. Uh, so you get a little bit of spacing up here. So when you're doing like an F chord or something, you gotta use a little bit more pressure. Or if you're uh, doing some pull offs you have to execute more precision. You know, a little bit higher of action makes you work a little harder. That's why a lot of guitar players like low action with their guitar. Some of them I do. For what it is, man, I'm cool with it. If I wasn't comfortable playing it, I would say so. Because I spent my hard-earned money on this on this project. So if it if I didn't think it was a a success, I would say so. But uh, luckily, I've done some guitar builds in the past i'm not a luthier i don't claim to be some fancy guitar builder uh, it's just a hobby for me so luckily i've done some of those in the past where i kind of understand what's going on to a degree and i can get myself through uh, but yeah now like i said if i could i would lower this a little bit more this trim system and it would be fine but when i do that it starts to uh, have dead notes up here at the top when you want to do a high bend I knew then I said well I need to raise it just a touch and then when I did the dead notes were gone but uh yeah so everything is good man everything's good I'm happy with it very happy with it um and my initial plan was believe it or not I was <laughs> I was coming down the road the other night and I said wouldn't it be cool if I could put like some type of EVH neck on here, you know, would it would it work? Because this body technically is not made out of the, you know, the factory where the EVH guitars are made. So it's going to be the, the dimensions are not going to be exact, right? So I said, well, the Mighty Might neck works great on here. It'd be cool to have an EVH neck on here. Now you're kind of getting to the territory, like, well, if you're going to do that, why don't you just get an EVH? You know. <laughs> Because you're still under budget. You're still under that, you know, over two grand mark. But I was just looking and I was like, uh, what if I just found like a, kind of like a Charvel neck or something? Well, lo and behold, upon researching on uh, eBay, I did. And that's where this comes into play right here. So let me put this back again. Here we go. EVH fakey yeah man I'm I'm happy with it and uh, and I, I recorded some music with it so because people are asking also hey can we hear what it sounds like and of course you know because that's the main goal you know get all this stuff together and jam and play some music you know um, it's nice to see them hanging up back here but the main objective is to play some music man <laughs> have some fun uh, that's what I my objective is anyway the video I done about the um, the humbucker uh, that I got from uh, Guitar Fetish because I was going to put it in here and you know if you haven't watched parts one and two go back and watch those in that video the Guitar Fetish video somebody somebody left a comment that said uh, I really don't hear the humbucker all I hear is effects <laughs> I was like okay dude you know I was like uh I should have clicked on the guy's channel, but uh, look, man, I'm I'm not one of those channels where I'm going to say, here's what it sounds like, clean, cring. here's what it sounds like, dirty, cring. I'm not doing that. That's not what we do here. You know, what I do here is I hook stuff up and I jam out. If you're an experienced guitar player, you know what a humbucker is supposed to sound like. You know it's not, it's not supposed to be weak. It's supposed to be cranked and putting out some pretty good uh, output there for some gain and you kind of understand what's going on there uh, so I don't need to uh, plug something up with a, a very very clean tone and just you know I, man that drives me nuts you know I've been playing long enough I don't need to know all that when you cook something you put some ingredients with it you know seasonings whatever make it better and that's how I look at effects man it's uh, if you can make it more sweeter more catching to the ear go for it dude let me put this back on the wall get the other guitar and we'll get into that and now here's this guitar this is a, a guitar build that i did um about two years ago i'd say 
and it's pretty it's pretty plain you know there's it's not of course you can tell it's not relic it's nothing fancy it's just something that i wanted to do on my own just to see if i could do it and um again it's a godo trim and i got uh, titanium parts in there keep it from slipping now the neck that was on here was a mighty mite neck just just like on this one all right and like i said when i was talking about trying to find a charvel neck or something to put on there that's what this is so i bought this neck uh from a seller off ebay and it's the uh like a replica of eddie's bumblebee neck right and i remember eddie having this uh neck or that neck not this one but the neck that this is supposed to replicate i remember he had that on his frankie for a short while as well i think he kind of swapped back and forth i believe so i was wanting to i did i i, I attempted to put it on this but it just didn't work out it didn't work out because like i said again this is aliexpress this body is made in you know overseas and it just didn't line up really well i don't mean line up like this i mean it just it's like the action was really high and i tried to uh not really high it was uh the strings were riding on top of the fretboard so i had to jack up the action and then it was like the floyd was like way off the i was like man huh -uh. you know so took it off put the mighty mike neck back on had to resituate everything all over again and that took a lot of time so i finally got it back to where it needed to be as far as getting it all set up and then i said well i i have this guitar that i built a couple years ago and this is a seymour duncan uh custom 78 evh uh that's what's in there so i took the mighty mike neck off and i put this one on this one is the like i said the one i bought from the the seller from ebay and uh, actually i've bought uh, stuff from him before so i know the stuff he sells is high quality it's not some of this you know fly by night stuff but so i put it on here and got it all set up and it's great oh man and this neck is slimmer and that's uh what i call a fast neck and uh i put the uh stainless steel locking screws at the locking nut up there i love how the headstock is just painted black and he's got evh uh tuners on the back i know you can't see it because i can't get close enough to the camera without hitting something you just have to take my word for it but um so i got this neck on here man had to do some adjusting i uh, i did have the neck shimmed and it was it was too high took the shim out and it's perfect so yeah i was very glad so now this guitar i just upgraded it even more so i did a song with this guitar as well and uh so it's been a double whammy today man i, I was uh kind of nervous i was like man did i get myself into a pickle with this stuff is it going to work and uh, yeah it did it all worked out it just took a little bit more time to get everything specced the way i like it and get it set up so let me hang this back up and we'll continue from there okay man so we got the guitars back on the wall hanger there so that's the story with with those two back there uh again i'm i'm still very satisfied with the aliexpress because you know look man i knew going in i said this is a big gamble this is a big roll of the dice you're going to really really like it <laughs> or you're going to really really be disappointed and hate it uh but it turned out good now do i plan on buying something else from aliexpress as of right now no um I have watched videos uh, with other guitars that they sell, and uh, those just never really done nothing for me. Um, I've never been a big uh, Les Paul kind of, I mean, I have some, but just never been a big Les Paul person. It's always been super strats and stuff with Floyds, and I just like those kind of acrobatics, you know, with guitar. Uh, but yeah man i'm satisfied with it and like i said putting the uh the new neck that i just got on that build i did there i was like Phew, thank you lord man god uh because i was like if this don't work 
<laughs> I've done screwed myself really bad. So anyway, let's check out some comments. All right, here we go. So let's start off with um, this first comment. And it's from uh, Jimmy2098. Uh, thank you very much, Jimmy, for commenting. Jimmy Z, I think is what it is. 2098. I had to enlarge the the uh, font on my computer, so it's uh, taking me a little bit more to get used to this on certain things to click on. I apologize. Uh, Jimmy, uh, he comments. He says, Killer Guitar Brother, I was born in 70 as well. That's awesome, man. Yeah, as I was talking about the quarter on there on the... Uh, the fakie it's a 1970 i don't know what the original i don't know what the uh, official quarter is supposed to be on the official evh frankie I, I have no idea um i don't get into the real real deep details of all that stuff i just saw it was a 1970 and i thought that was i was like wow uh, how cool is that so anyway uh, he said, I was born in the 70s as well, and I am, I am an absolute Van Halen freak from way back. Greatest rock and roll band in history. I have an actual EVH Wolfgang and an actual EVH Frankie. Wow. White and black. Love them. But I wanted the red, white, and black and just couldn't shell out the cash. So I go, uh, excuse me. So I got super lucky. Amazon very briefly carried these and branded them as uh, Zooey. Is that right? Zooey guitars. That's interesting. I've never heard of this. Never heard of Zooey. Um, he says, uh, I ordered one. It was absolutely killer. Uh, so good. I immediately ordered a second one. So glad I did. Uh, they were gone a week later and never saw them again. Wow. Just like with the one you've got, the bodies and necks were killer on both except the neck was too chunky uh, I still need to sand the neck down a bit and make it less chunky but yeah great necks and incredible bodies both of them now the electronics were absolute garbage and the fake Floyd didn't even qualify for garbage <laughs> it was awful he says but no matter um, I threw in a, a Wilkinson uh, hot bridge pickup and both of them uh, put a legit Floyd, not the German one, one of, uh, uh, let's see, uh, a Shaler Floyd replacement strap bridge. Okay, direct drop in Floyd replacement and the other. So one Floyd, one strap bridge. Both of them came out incredible. Each cost me two seventy nine on Amazon, plus the extra parts I put in, which was about $150 per guitar. Uh, love your vids and I subbed thank you very much Jimmy man for that kind comment that's so cool man I'm trying to see how long ago when he got these guitars I, it didn't say how long ago was that when he got these from Amazon wow because I never heard of them and uh, I guess they got gone really quick because they probably were going to get sued and um, hmm. but over there with AliExpress they don't care they don't care about any of that ain't nobody gonna go after them uh andy dion he goes i look forward to part two these are comments from of course part one thank you andy bozik uh i eventually uh will get one of these fake chinese les pauls or strats uh i asked that they not put a logo on it then have my guitar tech buddy down at the local shop upgrade whatever's wrong with it then finally depending on which model have the airbrush artist shop down the street from my office paint a chipson or gender logo on there wow that's amazing uh, uh so uh, then it looks legit as uh, to what it really is thank you bozik for that comment yeah I, i've heard i don't I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that uh, when some people buy these Gibsons, uh, they'll they will re request from the seller to put a piece of tape over the the, the name, the logo, or whatever. Um, so it, I guess, so it don't get held up in customs. You know, I'm assuming that's what it is. Uh, the good thing about this guitar was it's unbranded. There's nothing on the headstock, so it came right through with no problem. Okay, next comment. Fernando Oliveira, is that right? Um, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. 
wow, I really like uh, the axe considering the price for an AliExpress Frankie. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, you know, like I said, my experience was great, man. Uh, let's see. Token HJ4XG. Is that is that correct? Uh, cool demo. Are you going to make a video when you upgrade? Yes, absolutely. That's what we're doing now, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. CH3NZ3NI. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. That shirt, LOL, a fellow man of culture, I see. Yeah, in that video, part one, I was wearing a T-shirt that said, the debate is real, and it's got these two women on it. <laughs> and uh, it just shows my age. Those two women are from a movie from the early 80s called Urban Cowboy. All right. Um, and those were the two love interests from John Travolta in that movie. And uh, that was, uh, you know, who was hotter? Was it... Uh, Let's see, who, what was her name? Uh, Deborah Winger played the character of Sissy. And the other woman, I can't remember her character name in the movie, and I can't remember her real name. I do know she was in Funny Farm with Chevy Chase. But anyway, she was the rich chick, and uh, Deborah Winger's character was kind of the the blue-collar chick. Uh, so I put the nah, – I didn't put nothing. The shirt says the debate is real, like – who would you pick? Well, I know who I'd pick. It'd be Deborah Winger, that sissy. That's the. <laughs> that's just. I just. That's just me. But yeah, that's what that shirt's all about. If somebody saw that and they was like, "What? What is that on his shirt? What does that even mean?" That's what it means. Yeah, showing my age. Uh, Ken. 952 guitar he says how much did the guitar cost i didn't really say that in the first video because um i wanted to reveal that in part two so people would come back and, and watch part two but i did answer ken and i told him because you know i said in part one i'll reveal that later in this video and i and i didn't and so i kind of misled people there I'm, I'm sorry i meant to edit that out and i forgot <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the guitar, before anything was done, in case anybody's missed it, before any upgrades or anything, the guitar was with uh, shipping, uh, tax, whatever you want to call it, was 340 That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Johnny Bean says, how can they sell that with the stripes? And we didn't talk about that already. Yeah, man, because it's overseas and they don't care. <laughs> They don't care, man. It, it it don't matter to them. They don't care. <laughs> uh, let's see. So that was some of the comments from part one. Let's look at some of the comments from part two. I don't, first comment, uh, Brian Hudson. He says, thank you, Joe, for showing me some great resources for the fake EVH. Can't wait to see the progress. Be safe out there. Brian, thank you, man. That's really... Really, really kind, man. Thank you. Bozy comments again. He says, uh, oh, he's talking about if I go for the the uh, guitar fetish pickup. He says, Joe, if you go with a guitar fetish pickup, uh, they make one called a VEH, which stands for Vintage Extra Hot, which is uh, a take off the EVH uh, pickup and sound. Um, as far as necks, uh, Mighty Might is good. Also, a lot of folks who do the builds like Music Craft as well. I, did, I never looked into them. Who was it that I looked into that was expensive? Uh, Warmouth. Warmouth? Warmouth? They were high. I was like, good lord. I mean, but yeah, Music Craft, I, I don't think I've ever looked into them. I don't think. I could be wrong, but I don't know. I just went with Mighty Mike because I've done business there before and it was a smooth transition and um you know fast shipping and all okay jimmy z comments again um he says killer man i'm loving this series thank you jimmy uh anything van halen and evh and man i love evh frankie's wolfgangs and really just guitars in general uh but especially the vh type stuff rock on bro and I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing you play that bad boy now that I'm subscribed. Thank you, man. Yeah, you'll uh, you'll see that in this video. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. All right, let's move on. We'll do a few more, and then I'm going to get off here. Andrew Knox. 
Andrew Knox, thank you again for helping me with this whole this whole deal, man. Andrew really helped me a lot. Uh, so glad we could have. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm so glad we could both have some good luck getting our Frankies. Can't wait to see it being played. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, man, that's what we've been working towards tonight and uh, doing a lot of setups and getting things situated. And whoo, man, trying to cram two nights worth of uh, stuff into one night here. <laughs> Ted Fair, he says, good for you, Joe. Great bang for your buck. It's time to play some Chan Chalen. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome, man. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Mr. Ted. You're too, too kind, man. Charlie S., he says, good job, Joe. Thank you, man, very much. Thank you. And we'll look at uh, a couple more here. Uh, let's see. Clutch. 2827. Uh, oh, he says, I just ordered one. I actually wanted to buy five or six guitars. Wow. Man. Good Lord of mercy. Okay, this comment is from at, uh, TVD1984. Uh, he says, My DH Gate Kramer 5150 was beyond bad. Now, I don't know. I'm not familiar with the DH Gate Kramer, so uh, you have to forgive my ignorance, man. Um, Anyway, he says, my DH gate Kramer was beyond bad, laughable quality. Uh, I didn't have a moral issue about buying it as it was supposed to be a replica of an instrument that was never sold officially. But the Chinese shops, uh, to clearly rip off current instruments you can buy off the shelf uh, from branded names like Les Paul and Strats, is just plain immoral. People should have, uh, I'm sorry, people should just save up some more money and um, buy the real Gibsons or Fenders and stop giving money to these counterfeiters. If anyone, uh, if anyone would do that with IP and uh, products you would own, you'd be outraged. But somehow it's okay by, to buy these fakes. Heck, even if you're a kid or anyone, uh, or anyone broke, should get a summer paper route and uh, save up the way, uh, especially if you're really strapped for cash. I get it, man. I, I understand. I get it. I'm just, but for me personally, like I said in in uh, the previous videos, I have official EVH guitars, and they're great. They're wonderful. I've got EVH Stripe Series. I got the Wolfgang Specials. I got Wolfgang Standards. I got the PV Wolfgang, as you can see uh, hanging up back there. Uh, but the Frankie is, is a great guitar. And yeah, I'm sure if I were to shell out that much money, it, it, it's great. But I, you know, for me, I've seen, I've seen other people buy these guitars and I thought, why not, man? Roll, roll the dice. It's not going to hurt to do it one time. Uh, so that's why I did it because I just wanted to, <laughs> you know? So, uh, but anyway, I had fun, you know, and it's all done now. And uh, we are finished with this guitar project, finally. Okay, so, all right, let's, uh, I'm going to uh, let you check out some tunes here. Uh, we'll go with the, uh, the fakey first, and we'll play a song with that. And then we'll swap and go to my guitar build that I did a couple years ago with that, uh, that uh, Charvel neck on there. And um, we'll go out on that note.
thank you for watching part three here thank you so much for the support and the comments and and the uh positivity thank you so much i really really appreciate it it's been it's been fun making this little small short series and i need to put it in a playlist in case somebody comes up on it and uh they you know you can just watch them all three back to back if they want to all right thank you everybody have a great day merry christmas bye bye she came in and sat down right in front of me she picked up the glass of wine as i took